huge part of my life now is um, Dar es Salaam. So I'm at Dar es Salaam a lot. And uh, I'm also in graduate school. So I'm studying optometry, study of eyes. And uh, yeah. What, what made you want to go to Dar es Salaam? Dar es Salaam. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a podcast on this once with uh, someone named Saadat at Dar es Salaam. He was asking about why people chose DS. You said Saad? Saadat. Oh, so Saad. he's, he's one of the alumni from Dar es Salaam. Okay. And uh, he's a good friend of my brother's. Okay. But on that, I remember he asked me this question too. And really, I feel like everything was laid out for me. Mainly the reason for me that I wanted to go to DS was my brother. Mm. And. Uh, because he did it before you, right? Yeah, he did it before me and he kind of laid out the path. That. He had to go through a lot of struggles. To, to go be, there? Yeah, to go there. Yeah, I mean, he dropped out of one year of college. I remember yeah, it, it is. CUD, or maybe two years of college he dropped out. Yeah, he had two yeah. years of CUD. Were you there? Mashallah. Yeah, bro. Um, so basically, it was my brother that went to DS first. And then, really, the impact that it had on him was so profound on uh, myself and actually a lot of his friends as well um, that it kind of like, I naturally wanted to go to an institution like this, that if such a dramatic change happens in someone's life, then there must be something that I want in my life too. I want that change in my life too. So really that's what propelled me to join Dar Islam. And they have this uh, course called the Tanweer Intensive. I'm sure it's a lot of people know it. That's the um, one year. Yeah, it's the, okay. the uh, staple one year program that they have. Yeah. That's what uh, kind of what they're known for, their one year program. So I joined that and really, I mean, what it is, it's like a, like a dunya detox for me. Mm. Because you're like almost, I'd say, 80% uh, away from everyday life. Like a lot of friends that you used to have in college. So I went to BU for one year. And um, bro, I had so much fun in BU my freshman year. Like, Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. We used to like, oh my god, we used to screw around so much. Like I barely got anything done in freshman yeah. year. What were you majoring in at that point? Um, at that point, I was majoring in biology. Okay, so and your first year is really relaxed. All yeah, gen it's all just gen ed. I mean, you know actually, how it is, in, yeah. in any major, actually. It's yeah, it's all gen ed in the much. beginning. So, yeah. it's like, who even pays attention in gen ed? Nah. So, um, but then after that, I decided, you know what, let me give, give this a break. I want to go to Dar Salaam. So, I went there for one year. And, um, alhamdulillah, I mean, it's only from the photo of Allah, of course. It's from His permission and His grace. But I feel like I had a 180 degree turn on life itself. Uh -huh. I mean, for me, I was just out there to have fun and just, you know. Dar Salaam, Yeah, at, before Dar DS. Oh, before Dar Pre DS, yeah, yeah. yeah. But after I went to DS, what it does is it gives you perspective on life. Um, a lot of people, they forget what they learn in it. And, you know, it's a lot of stuff to remember. That's what's called intensives, because Arabic, mm -hmm. Islamic studies. It's hardcore. But what people do not forget is the experience they've had and the relationships they make mm -hmm. and the changes that they have from the program itself. So mm -hmm. a lot of that I carried over. That's and then good. going back to BU after that, it was like a whole different perspective on like studies, for example. Um, you want to apply your 100% self into it because, you know, tomorrow you might need to either teach someone or you're going to apply it tomorrow. Or even that is just about basic ethics. Like you don't want to be cheating, lying, any of that. Because I did one year, which was, um, I didn't take any college then. It was just one year at DS. So uh, like I was saying, it was an experience that changed my life. Uh, alhamdulillah, I went back to BU after that. But what I continued to do is I had this desire to continue Alam course. So Alam course is the uh, seven-year study to become a scholar. Depends on which institution you go to, sometimes six, sometimes seven. But it is a long course of study. Um, the equivalent of an Alam course, I would say, is like almost a master's. Sorry. So I had this desire to continue Alam course. But uh, at the same time, it's uh, I wanted to continue my s secular education. So I wanted to become a doctor at that point. Um, like a, a proper physician to so go to medical school. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do both at once. So I was doing alum course and college at once. So at that point I was, I, so I came in with a year done of college. So actually what when I like came- With APs you're saying? Yeah, with APs. Uh -huh. So when I came back, I was still in the proper year I was supposed to be in. Gotcha. So as a freshman, I was actually a sophomore credit wise. Yeah. So leaving college, I was still a junior. Con con technically I was a junior. Leaving college, what do you mean? Yeah, as in for Dar Salaam. Because I did a year of college and then I went to Dar es Salaam for a year. Oh, okay. When yeah, I came yeah, back, I would technically then. be a oh, sophomore. Oh, yeah, but yeah. credit wise, I was a junior. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, because I had 60 credits done by then. Yeah. So I was taking junior level courses in my second year of college. But at the same time, I was also in second year of Dar es Salaam. So I would say that year and the year after that was one of my hardest, the hardest years of my life because mm -hmm. I was doing intense studying on both sides of the was spectrum. Was the Dar es Salaam full time? Dar es Salaam was full time. Dar es Salaam was full time and college was also full time. Yeah. How many credit hours were you taking? I was taking 15, 
and okay so that's like yeah. a legit full workload yeah um and a full workload in ds so yeah i was gonna say how much does the work compare like if you're gonna say like how much percentage allocation time was towards al salam and how much was towards school mornings until about 1 30 was ds time and then morning so starting like a fudger 7 45 7 45 okay. until lunar time was all ds mm -hmm. and then after that 1 30 does would that mean you're physically there or like physically, studying physically okay. physically yeah. there yeah. uh taking classes mm -hmm. um and i didn't take the elective courses so i didn't take like for example i wasn't studying urdu mm -hmm. in my second year um that class because that was in the afternoon mm -hmm. so and i wasn't able to participate because i had to go to bu after that mm -hmm. and after that i have all my bu courses until practically 7 p.m maybe even 8 p.m Sometimes 10, depending on the labs. Because oh, wow. nice. it was brutal for me. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I made it work that year. Mm -hmm. So I finished my second year as well, Alhamdulillah. And my um, college was finishing as well. My second year of college. Or technically third year, because I was a junior. Third and then after that, that's when everything got, like, one, I'd say ex exponentially difficult. Because now, the thing with, the, uh, of course, um, Dar uh, Alam course classes is that the first year and second year are easy to manage, but third year classes is when all books are in Arabic. Every single book is in Arabic. There's a class that is taught in Arabic, and there is more like intensive material as well. Mm -hmm. um, I would like almost compare third year classes to like first year of graduate school classes. Okay. That's how difficult they can be in understanding them, memorization, exams. I'll be honest, outside looking in, I assume they would be a lot harder than in school. Yeah, I mean, it, it really like most schools. Yeah, it depends Depending on like on what major, type of obviously. mindset you come in with, yeah. of course. Yeah. But at the same time, it is it is difficult, more difficult than college because there's just, I mean, this this type of studying is not it's not something that you can forget in one year. You, this not is even that. Cumulative. It's not. Yeah, no one huge thing. I mean, you can tell me if this is true, but like with school, a lot of it is you're learning to pass or fail to, to, to yeah. pass a class. This year, you don't want to ever forget it, right? Like, yeah. everything you're trying to know is important, basically. Yeah, because tomorrow you'll be leading the masses. Exactly. You know? It's not, it's not like school, right? If they, if they come up to you and ask you a question, you can't just be like, oh, I forgot. I was, it was like, I wasn't paying attention or whatever. I wasn't paying attention in class. Yeah. They're going to deem you as incompetent on the spot. Yeah. So it's like a very unfortunate reality, but, you know, you have to you have to keep up with your studies. That seems like the biggest difference uh, outside yeah. looking into me. Yeah. So is that I'll, true? I'll, I you would think? say so, Compared yeah. Compared to like your regular school? I would say so. I mean, of course, when it comes to higher level courses, then they would expect you to remember those things moving yes. forward. Like yes. organic chemistry sometimes, but physiology, like, anatomy. You're going to have a lot of classes that you know, like, okay, yeah. I just need to pass this and then I'm never going to yeah, use it yeah, again yeah. type of thing. There like, are I had a lot of like that. Like I had like yeah. a psychology class like that. I don't there remember anything. Calculus? Like, come on, I forgot There you calculus. go, yeah, <laughs> calculus. Like, even for me, I've taken every math class pretty much. I don't think, I've never used anything above like eighth grade math <laughs> probably like in my life yeah and it, i mean it helps me think differently but mm -hmm. um definitely like you know the concepts more you definitely wouldn't i wouldn't be able to solve any of the problems though yeah in that so that's that that point that you mentioned is a huge point that i had in third year because now i felt like um and i mean i guess i, I don't want to use like bad language or anything but like i was halfing it basically i don't want to yeah, yeah you know like you, yeah. you're not putting your full effort going into through something. the mo yeah, half yeah. Effort. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> so I don't 50% yeah 50% so you're doing 50% here you're doing 50% there it's like neither here nor there mm. you're not putting 100% you're just like you know it's like uh, a jack of all trades yeah master uh, of versus none a, yeah ma master of none yeah. but like when it comes to alum course it's not like something you can just be a jack of all trades you have to be a master at it because mm -hmm. again tomorrow people will be coming you with questions coming to you with questions mm -hmm. so this thought in my mind I'm like I'm not doing this properly so um I had to make a decision at four months into my third year that was like a huge uh decision making point you can say for me four months into it because at this point i'm taking very high level science courses courses like anatomy physics um i had microbiology i think i was taking cell biology as well so i was taking some classes that are very demanding at the same time third year is also very demanding and i mean human capabilities are only so much mm -hmm. so four months into it i felt like i was about to explode Mm -hmm. that I can't con I can't continue I have to drop one thing okay right because both sides are demanding a hundred percent and okay. I'm not you, giving you, it to you're both. gonna fail both I, or either do yeah I'm gonna f if I put enough if I put my attention to this I'm gonna fail the other mm -hmm. if I put my attention to the other, I'm gonna f I mean it's gonna it's bound to happen one thing had to go yeah so it was at that moment that like you know I made much with a couple of my classmates a couple of my teachers mm -hmm. and um, the best decision for me at that point and now this is not the best decision for everyone but the best decision for me was to drop out of our course and mm -hmm. continue my college okay but um, 
I made like an intention or like a resolution in myself that you know I may stop now but down the line I will complete it inshallah. this is not something inshallah I mean with yeah. your dua and inshallah course, whoever's watching this please make dua for me as well my intention is moving forward that I will complete it one day inshallah, inshallah. so just to recap you've done three years on a volume course I did two and a half because after half. my two years uh, after my after I finished two years my third year I did four months so are you going to repeat the third year or you most probably I will okay. most probably I will because even those four months I feel like I didn't do it properly okay it was too so okay. I'd have to I'd have to repeat that third year and inshallah okay. I can I because even after that, I made it a point to never, um, like, disrupt my connection with Dar Okay. So until now, uh, in some way, shape, or form, I've always taught in some capacity over there. That's good. Mashallah. Either as a Quran teacher, as a Maktab teacher. Um, I've also taught beginner level Arabic, um, uh, and um, beginner level Fiqh, and nice. also Arabic. Is literature. that a beginner level fifth class? Is that all in course class? Or is that yeah, like it's an all in course class. It's an all in course. Yeah, it's not uh, like a very general community class, but it's actually a more specialized nice. all in course level class. Nice, mashallah. And um, other than nowadays, alhamdulillah, I'm teaching um, academic subjects at Dar es Salaam, mm -hmm. so like math, science, English. Not science. I'm sorry, math and English. I've been teaching those subjects. That's great, mashallah. So you're yeah. giving back, and then mm -hmm. obviously. Um, you know, you getting compensated. You know, bro. As well. I mean, there's one thing that I don't know if you know, brother Kabir, but from CPS, from CPS, yeah. the guidance I counselor. I, but he wasn't there the same time as me, but I remember. Okay, um, so brother Kabir, uh, after that point in um, when I graduated high school, I went to him for guidance because I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. You graduated high school, okay? After I finished high school. Yeah. So this so is actually sort of like this. Yeah, like like this is three year gap basically, right? Because you went to the last three years in Gambar South. La I, I did all my high school in Gambar South. Okay, so this is basically yeah, four after years after you left. Yeah, after four years, but I was because okay. brother Kabir's my neighbor. With him? Yeah, he's my neighbor. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So I was I was pretty close to him. Nice. But okay. I came to him for advice on like what should I do with my life, basically, because sometimes you need help in figuring out a major or figuring out what step I should take next. Mm -hmm. And um, he always said, whatever you choose to do in life, it doesn't matter what you choose, whether it be an IT professional like yourself. Are you an IT professional or a business analyst? I'm an IT. IT professional, yeah. yeah. IT professional. If you're a business analyst. Um, a sales manager I don't know it, it doesn't matter what you're going to be in life but always have three aspects in mind number one whatever you choose are you um, do you like it definitely do you like it because there's a lot of stuff you don't want to get into something you don't like yeah right and of, I'm saying this not as um, of course it's advice for everyone but I use this in my life to choose what I'm doing now yeah I love what I'm doing I'm becoming an inshallah inshallah in two years I'll be finishing a graduate school mm -hmm. in optometry school and mm -hmm. also I love Islam I love sure. teaching Arabic. I love teaching in general, so I do that. Would you say, uh, honestly though, would you say that, that Islam is more your passion, but you have to pay your bills, so you want to do uh, I'd say I'd say that's like maybe 60 to 70% okay. of that. Okay, I mean, that's a realistic thing. Yeah. Anyways, you can carry on with the three yeah. things you were saying. Yeah, so the first one is, um, are you, what was it? Are you, do you like what you, do you like what you want to choose to do? Someone's at the door. Good at it. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that he said that really struck with me is by choosing what you're going to do, not only do you like it, and are you good at it but is it something that could also give back to mankind mm -hmm. like in service of mankind you know that quote by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah I think he said that your, your rent on earth is service to others I think that's never heard that but that sounds said pretty dope like, yeah he said something like that just stay on I, I know some of his other quotes that I can't say on here <laughs> <laughs> okay. whenever he works out anyways uh, go ahead yeah so <laughs> a, a way to give back to mankind as well so I took that to heart because whatever I choose to do Whatever I want to be, I want to make sure that I always give back. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I'm very involved with teaching specifically, because I feel like my and with my talents, the best way I can give back is teaching others. Um, because I feel in a classroom environment, that's when you can change lives. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why my whole life, actually since I was maybe even um, an eighth grader or a seventh grader, I've been a teacher since a seventh since seventh You're grade. Guessing his then? Yeah, Quran, Quran. then. Yeah, after that, it, uh, it was Quran and tutoring in different subjects, and then it's like, slowly... Like uh, academic subjects? Yeah, academic okay. subjects. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, after in Dar Islam, became Arabic teacher, academic teacher, so... Nice, expanding nice. talents, but at the same time, I feel that you can really change a person's life, because for the most part, we always remember our teachers growing up. Remember our teachers and our parents. These are, the, I feel, two forces that really impact how we grow up. Of course, friends are there as well, Mm -hmm. But in terms of shaping us as a human being, I feel like parents are number one, and number two are teachers. Because my teachers changed my life after mm -hmm. Dar Salaam, and I still remember a lot of my teachers from college. 
Oh, really? Uh, yeah, oh, like, okay. uh, like my anatomy teacher had a profound effect on me on not only anatomy itself. I feel like because of her, I remember my anatomy till today. Yeah. But also she told me that never lower your expectations. Because mm -hmm. uh, she, she would teach us so much and then expect us to know it. And then we'd always complain, of course, as a college student. Yeah. But she said, no, you know, I, my expectations for my students are high because I don't, I feel like my students can be better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that simple like line that she said on a random Wednesday at night at 6 p.m., like till today, I will never forget that. Wow. So I really feel that as a teacher, you can give back the most. And that's because I'm utilizing my own talents. Yep. People have different talents. Yeah. But always figure out a way Honestly, to Honestly, it seems like what I you're mean, saying. I mean, you know what, Yusuf, to be honest, yeah. like what you're doing right now, mm -hmm. I feel like you're just, it's crazy how much an impact of a haircut can have on people. For sure. Because, I mean, I'm sure you looked at philosophy beyond haircuts and like, Literally, it boosts self esteem. And yeah, this is, this yeah. is like a perfect way to give back to other people. Yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. boosts self esteem. Yeah, I mean, like I was thinking about it just the other day. I mean, people, I prefer coming to you, number one, because I just know you mm -hmm. for a long time, and number two, because you're Muslim. Mm -hmm. But like on top of that, I mean, what you do is you do it with sincerity. You do it so you can help others as well. Of course. And you're good at it. <laughs> alhamdulillah. I mean, alhamdulillah. Like I, I, I really think it, um, it, it tells like what type of person you are. So, uh, giving back to people, uh, I feel like that's a huge thing with uh, my life. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Mashallah. I mean, that's it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always course. attribute everything back to Him. Um, so, uh, did you cover all three? Can you recap what they were? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Num n so, number one was, do you like what you're doing? Uh -huh. number, two one, are, uh, number two is, are you good at what you want to do? Mm -hmm. and number three is, whatever you like to do and whatever you choose to do and you're good at it, is it a way for you to give back to mankind as well? Give back to mankind. Yeah, okay. service to mankind. You know what, interesting, because I, I kind of assumed one of them would be to s kind of support your family. Okay. But it, it wasn't. But I, I would assume almost anything you do, if you're good at it, Mm -hmm. You can make it support your family. Yeah, yeah. I think almost everything. Not everything. I mean, giving back is uh, giving back is very. It's a very broad term. Like, yeah. Uh, figuring out a job. I mean, what the primary reason you get a job is to support yourself and to support your family. Yep. But um, people often forget that you know a huge part of your life is also giving back to other people as well. Yes. Yeah, but I feel yeah, g uh, supporting your family. That's like, one hundred percent given. Mm -hmm. For example, you, you may have taken a little bit longer than, for example, I have, but. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, end of the day, it's you don't talk about, after you become Hafiz, no one cares about how long it took no, you. No. It's the status itself. Like, you, alhamdulillah, you finished. Honestly, all that matters is how pakka you are. Yeah. And I, I okay. Um, number one, don't get discouraged on how long it takes you. Great I advice. know some people who took five years, seven years. Some people who took 15 years. 15, um, really? Part-time? Yeah. Part time. Okay. Part time, yeah. Because, you know, th at that, if you're taking 15 years, it's probably because you're older and you don't have as much time. Yeah, um, but at the same time, if you're doing it as you're older, it's not like you're going back in years because you're doing it with your work or yeah, whatever. Yeah, you are. So yeah. You're not gonna, and also, you get so much more reward, obviously. You're struggling mm -hmm. through it. Yeah, but it's done. Like I always emphasize that, look, it's just you, you're going to get there, inshallah. inshallah. Some people take a little longer than others. Mm -hmm. um, other, some people just have a stronger memory. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. I mean, you know Kobe Bryant's like, whole philosophy. Yeah. It's ta yeah. Hard work trumps talent any yeah. time, yeah. Any, ta any yeah. time of the day. It's, it's really and that ethic that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at, that effort that you put in. Would you say that uh, Hivs, as you go on, revising gets harder the more you know, obviously. And memorizing gets, like, hundreds of times easier the more you know. The more you know. Yeah. Uh, like, by the time you're any of your Hiv, memorizing is very easy. Very easy, yeah. Like, it's so, like I, can't e I couldn't even, like, fathom how easy it is at the end. Yeah, I mean, if you, look, if you, you think just about read it, it memory, you memory is like a muscle. Like, yeah. to memorize something, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is a All part of the brain and point. stuff, but it's, like, it's, like a, it's a muscle at the end of the mm -hmm. day. In the beginning, if you do bicep curls, I mean, you might not even get above 10, 15, 20 or something because mm -hmm. you just started off. But mm -hmm. you do that for consistently for a year. Next thing you know, you're curling like 50, 60. Mm -hmm. And you think about 10, it's like, what is this? Like, I can do this with one finger. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? You think it started off like it didn't start yeah. off like that. It's a it's a process. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, it's like a muscle. You slowly work it out. It gets stronger and stronger. I remember by the end of my hips, I was memorizing like five, six pages a day. Yeah, and you can't even imagine that. Yeah, and on my it, when I first started, I, it took me almost an hour to memorize five lines. Yeah, it's yeah. like what 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 happened? You think it's not like something you jump to. Yeah. It's something that you. I would I, I would say, Marshall, outside looking in, you look like you had a talent or to memorizing more than the average person. Obviously, you still have to work hard. There's no way yeah. you're not going to, especially being Bakka, like, really, it's really, you have to just read a lot. Mm -hmm. um, mashallah, you always had that. But obviously, you still got to put the hard work. Because I think about, yeah. like... But, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but even after I, I finished his in February, like I was saying, mm -hmm. um, 
so I mean you can't just go to school in February so you yeah. I had four or five months before I went to February uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to school um, probably legit I wish I did that yeah uh, that's I finished while I was in school <laughs> yeah there's some people who finish in school some people yeah. who finish in the summer and what happens is of course uh, um, parents would put them back into school because they're done with his they have to move on with their lives now right mm -hmm. but they don't get enough time to revise mm -hmm. for me I had four or five months to revise Mm -hmm. So I personally always make sure when someone ever like mentions like oh my god mashallah you're so pakka you know this and that mm -hmm. I mean and let's not forget Allah SWT gave me a little bit more time to do door and that that process of door mm -hmm. my uh, our Hafiz like really emphasized in us like it's something that allows me to remember my Quran Alhamdulillah until today mashallah, I mean mashallah. now that I think about it 14 years is like you know it's a long time it's not yeah for sure. Yeah, I mean, even for you, like, how, how long has it been? Like, almost Since I finished? seven, eight years? Since I finished? No, more than that, dude. I finished oh, 2010, so I think. 2009, 2010. Oh, subhanAllah. Well, so it's been like 12 yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. was a senior in high No, I was in CPSA my junior year. No, my sophomore year. But I was like, my, yeah, so I was 16. Oh, I'm 28. Uh, 12 years. 12 years, mashallah. Yeah. And y you're turning 29 now, right? 29. Oh, almost. In, 13 uh, years, actually. July. Yeah, 13 years, inshallah. So that process of revision, it's like, it's so key. And that kind of leads into my second point. So first one is don't be discouraged on how long it takes. Mm -hmm. Advice to his students. Number two is don't ever leave outdoor because you want to memorize more. Oh um, my God, don't I can ever, that like crazy. Don't, don't ever <laughs> feel like, oh no, I just need to finish. This, this talash for finishing is really going to hurt you in the long run. I feel like it's, um, you just want that relief yeah. and that pressure and you just want to be done. But really, you're never done, so it doesn't yeah. even matter if you're finished yeah. or not. Yeah, I um, mean, a lot, lot, they're little kids too, so it's hard for them to get that idea into their brains. For sure. You know, it's, even for an adult, this, yeah. this, I'm sure it's hard, man. Yeah. You just want to be done. Yeah, but in that like pursuit to finish, which is a very noble pursuit, because there's so many uh, virtues and fabaa'in of khafad, mm -hmm. at the same time, you want to be a proper one too. Mm -hmm. Like by definition, just by the word, hafiz doesn't mean um, yeah, it me one translation is to memorize, and Hafiz is someone who has memorized the Quran. But in reality, Hafiz means to protect. Mm -hmm. It's a protector of the Quran. Right? Yeah. What does it mean to protect it? Pro someone to protect something, it has to be firmly um, treasured inside of their hearts. Yeah. So it extends beyond just memorizing it. It goes yeah. to revising it and making sure it's preserved inside of your Quran. Mm -hmm. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hijr, <laughs> wa inna lahu okay. right? yeah. We have revealed the Quran and we're the ones who protect it. Mm -hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us, alhamdulillah, to be those protectors. But to be a proper protector, you have to preserve in your Quran. Mm -hmm. So don't get discouraged by how long it takes, but also please put your time in to revise it. Yes. Because now, you, growing up, and you can attest to this, there's a lot more responsibilities that come your way. Oh yeah. It's, it's so much that more difficult. Every every year it's more. Yeah, every and year. And like every year, I think that I'll be more have more time the year after. Yeah. And uh, usually get usually it's the cases I get more busy. Mm. Um, Definitely, one hundred percent. Yeah. Very rarely do you get less busy in life, and sometimes it actually does happen. But if it does, you gotta take advantage. Yeah. And revise. And you have the time now. It's yeah. like why not just you have no responsibilities. Your responsibility young, yeah. is literally just go and memorize mm -hmm. and revise. So you want to do that. There's a thing to doing the right thing at the right time, like yeah. going hard on revising in the beginning, yeah. so that you don't have to go as hard when you're older. Because yeah. if you try going as hard when you're older, and respons you might actually shirk on your, your other responsibilities. Yeah. So and that's one of the things that like I always remember my half sub, our half sub for. Mm -hmm. We had the same half sub, right? Yep. Half sub yep. Like what he would do is he would make sure our revision was pakka yep. in such a way. Like after I finished my hivs. Um, it wasn't just a simple recite a juz a day. I mean, he started off with just recite a quarter a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was like, what? A quarter? I could recite more than that. But the way he tested me was like, it was different. like next level testing. Mm -hmm. Like, you have one stuck, khalas, like, yeah. 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 Where, where would you uh, recommend someone goes to his? Recommend for his? Yeah, what, what, what school? And uh, I mean, maybe you can recommend Dar Salaam because he went there. Or you go, you teach there right now? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I'm gonna have a very biased perspective because mm -hmm. I've only been to, I've only, not only have I like seen the Dar Salaam system, but like I taught in it too. I taught. Oh, you taught the hips there. Yeah, I taught the hips over there okay. for about like four or five months. Okay. So uh, I really honestly, have are the so I'm not just talking about the kids in particular or anything because that I feel who who's baka who's not. Not only depends on the teacher, not like it's their responsibility, but the environment they create, but also on the student after, before, you know, some mm -hmm. kids are very talented. It doesn't matter what you put them, they're going to be baka. Uh, do you think they're more strict there 
than they were at IFAS? Um, strict in the sense of like making sure we're uh, where we don't move on, we don't get news all the same without being uh, completely fucked up. Um, so growing up for me, it was strict. Yeah. I guess at Dar Salaam they standardized that strictness. The standard, okay, because <laughs> I first was it, it, it really varied on who yeah, you were. Yeah, no, we didn't like really you, have like a if, standard. If Hapsab knew that you were someone who could not get paka, or like you were just too old or too hard, he would make it a little easier for them. Mm -hmm. And then if you knew you were young, he would make it like you got to do, like mm -hmm. I know yeah. your potential. So there was no standards in that case, right? No, but, there was, uh, but not to say that he was not, he didn't I think Honestly, I mean, I don't know how it is there, if it's better standardized, but I feel like it was tailor-made for each person. Yeah. In a way. So over here, uh, what we're doing is, Whenever a student comes in, we want to make sure they meet a certain standard. Okay. So all of them coming in are um, like at the same level, and all of them when they're leaving, they're all at the same level. So, oh, that's so that's like the kind of standard that um, our his director has. So, for example, coming in. So, and this is just more information on the his program, and because of course I'm at Dar es Salaam, that's all I know. So they kind of split the Dar es Salaam his program into two. Mm -hmm. The first part is called his prep. And the second part is called Hibs. What's his prep? So, yeah, so um, a lot of times the struggle that students have is they're learning Tajweed as they're memorizing. Yep. Tajweed means to recite the Quran properly. Mm -hmm. So doing that while memorizing, sometimes what happens is if you don't learn all the rules at once, mm -hmm. then you may be making some mistakes in the beginning and then you learn later on that they're not mistakes. Uh, they are mistakes and you try correcting them, but it's so difficult because you memorize a certain way. Yeah. To change the way you memorize, it's like it's very hard to manipulate long-term memories. And since it's a long-term memory, it's so hard to just change it and yeah. like change your whole perspective on how you look at the ayah. Yeah. Memorizing forward, you may know the mistake, certain mistakes. So what we do is before they come into hips, they have to learn all the tajweed rules. They have to learn how to recite the Quran properly and they have to have all of 30th truths memorized. How long does that take normally or is it like set Yeah, time? so uh, it really, again, it depends on the child. That's what I thought, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, Six I, months? I've had I've had some that literally took them three weeks. Yeah, is it because they is came it, in with a lot of yeah, knowledge, they or they just really smart? Yeah, they came in with a lot of tajweed. Okay, right. So that's the thing; they don't just go directly into hips like, oh, you know what tajweed you can go. We yeah. want to make sure they're yeah. at a certain threshold. Okay, gotcha. right. They know the rules. They can regurgitate the rules. They can apply the rules. Okay, and we learned it differently at IFS, right? We didn't. At least for I remember how I feel like the kids at IFS who graduated amazing tajweed. I'll be like, that's how I feel. I don't you can tell me if I'm wrong, but we don't. And I don't really know if this is even like um, it matters or not because it's, like I guess it matters if you're teaching it. Uh, well, we didn't really know the names though, yeah. the rules. Mm -hmm. But I think we applied all of them. We applied all of them, definitely. Yeah, yeah, but, I didn't know but like I didn't know what like noon sakin and ikhfa uh, versus I didn't know any yeah. of those words. I have to like I literally look at the Quran music in the back. I'm like, oh, I know, I, I do that. I just never knew <laughs> so why I, I don't I don't put my tongue all the way down for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. So I'm guessing they learn all those uh, all those so words. So in terms of like where the letters are like exactly where it is in the mouth, I think that we don't do because it's too complex. Like, mm -hmm. oh, make sure you put your tongue in this okay. place. Okay, but but, but it is more. Practical. Long, you know about that, right? You know that, but also like the practical ways on how to pronounce the letters. Like, okay, look, hear, hear how I'm saying it. Yeah. Try to put your tongue over here. You don't need to like. Yeah, no, exactly. it, it, it's very unnatural to learn it. Yeah. At least for me, like in a technical way. Very theoretical. Like when you see it in a book, like yeah. you seen how like put your tongue on these yeah. molars. I'm like, dude, what? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, and then I'm like, do I am I saying it wrong the whole time? Maybe yeah. I am. Yeah. But like, uh, the theoretical it, aspect, it's very difficult to learn to read because especially for kids, like, there's no way they that'll stick in. I guess that's not how you learn language. Yeah. You learn language by speaking yeah and right? practical you, you yeah. learn how they say it like uh there's only like for example like german words when you read them they're like a certain way they're pronounced as well yeah. or french words or um they're pronounced in a certain way you can't get that from a book you mm -hmm. have to actually hear someone saying it mm -hmm. and then you can like m mimic how they're saying it so that you could apply it when you say that word same thing with tajweed you you need a teacher for it so what we do in the hips, hips prep program is we try to make sure that they can gain all the rules for hips uh for tajweed and then after that, once they do Nazira um, of uh, the first Jews or second, I believe Surah Baqarah, and then uh, they also memorize. So it's not like they're not memorizing at all. They're also memorizing 30th Yeah, because sometimes if you don't memorize anything, it could be very discouraging. Yeah, for yeah. Kid. No, like they're memorizing. You feel like, you feel like they're you're just, not going to progress. Yeah, they're just memorizing it like 100% properly. I got you. They're, they're a lot memorizing of probably in, more from yeah, A lot of students repeating. come in with like 20, 30 surahs already memorized. Yeah. So we quote unquote re-memorize them meaning yep. that like, memorize it properly yeah, yeah. and then after that That's they move on to the, the HIPS teachers okay. and when they go to the HIPS program itself the actual mm -hmm. one then they like you know slowly pick up and like they pick up their speed and everything is, um, um, whenever when I used to pray at DIC right when I was working downtown 
I used to love it when the Dao Song students came in. Point of a clipboard to fear Allah, right? Yeah, that's one of the main ones. Yeah, yeah. it's it's the main one is kind of like a reminder, mm -hmm. a reminder for all of us, mm -hmm. because end of the day, a lot of things that they speak about, it's like something we know, but it's always good to have a reminder. For of, us. Course, you, of course, you know we're supposed to seek forgiveness, but sometimes hearing it in like yeah. encourages us to go. Okay, okay, I think I should go back to that. Which I true attitude that I should have when I sit in a khutbah is what can I take? Yeah, learn whatever you can. Right? Whatever, even if it's the smallest thing, mm -hmm. let me just grab onto that. For sure, you know? yeah. You don't want to be like a hater. Yeah, which I I'm mean, kind of being right now. No, it's not. It's not that. I mean, you're you're one hundred percent correct. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. But but I, no, you still I, you still got to benefit from whatever's there. Whatever, what yeah. like even the smallest of things. I mean, like um. My, my teacher Mufti Minaj always says the first number one uh, try to have the best opinion about someone no matter even if you like for example if you see a guy and a girl mm. and you know they're not related yeah. you know they're not married yeah. and you know they're just like you know boyfriend girlfriend they're Muslim yeah. even then like you should try to create some type of excuse, excuse yeah. so that you don't see the bad in it mm -hmm. you know always have the best opinion now of course if there's Try to find don't your people. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah. And if it's like a talk like that, I mean, yeah, it's it's difficult to pay attention, and like you get turned off so quickly. It's like, all right, man. Like I don't I don't want to know what's Biden doing tomorrow. It's like, yeah. what are you like his personal personal like yeah. you know? But if they even mention the smallest thing, like it could be the smallest thing as the Arabic khutbah. It says ittaqullah. It's like okay, that's practical advice for me right there. Yeah, take that home. It's like okay. Yeah. A lot of other things, you know, just you you don't have time for that. Just filter it out from your mind. Yeah. But like the thing that you can take home with you, just just focus on, even no, if it's a small little thing. Of course, that's great advice. And this is not from me. This is from my teachers. Like, okay. I, this is not my my Not advice. Sure. It's like I'm just passing down advice.